Hello and welcome back to a very special video today because this is a video of my experience in the Holy Land. Ah, I can't believe that it happened. Basically we were on vacation sort of nearby in the Middle East area and I knew Israel was not far away so by the grace of God we were able to get just a day trip over there. The flight was pretty short and we just spent the whole day in Jerusalem and Bethlehem and it was incredible and I feel so blessed I was able to get that experience. If you've been following me on Instagram you will know that I have been sharing over the last few weeks photos in my Instagram stories and on my main posts. I have put a stories highlight so you can go back and watch everything right from the beginning. So I'll begin this video with my initial reaction entering into the city of Old Jerusalem and then just the Holy Sepulchre. Basically you can't drive in Old City so you have to park outside and when you walk up the steps you are greeted with the huge beautiful wall that really looks like a castle. It's so stunning and this is the Jaffa Gate that I entered through here and you'll notice in Jerusalem everywhere, old and new city, that everything looks really uniform and it's that beautiful sandy stone. And that's because a rule was actually put in place that all buildings within Jerusalem need to be built from the Jerusalem stone. So that's why everything looks so uniform and just fits together so beautifully. And I think that's a really nice touch and I'm glad they've enforced that law because I think it really brings everything together. So when you enter, you can see the Tower of David there and this is Jaffa Gate and this is how you enter into the old city and it is as breathtaking as you imagine. I was just kind of in awe like looking around. So yeah, some of my camera footage is a bit shaky <laughs> because I was just spinning around trying to take it all in very quickly, but yeah, it's gorgeous. So when you start walking through, the main thing that stands out is just the different dimensions and levels of the city because initially it has been rebuilt over the original ruins numerous times. So the original ground that Jesus walked on, for example, is quite a few meters below current ground level. And there are various points throughout the city where they've left the ruins open. Sometimes they're covered with a, a grate so you can just see down and sometimes they've left big sections open. But you can see the original ground underneath and sometimes they've brought stones from the bottom and lifted them up to current level as well. So the actual city has been rebuilt so many times and now it's, it's much higher than it originally was. And what I love about the streets is a lot of them are on hills and so there's just a lot of dimension and they're very narrow of course because there are no vehicles allowed but they have beautiful decorations, they've got some like umbrellas, they've just got little shutters loads of beautiful souvenir shops, bright colours and loads of different products there for um, tourists as well. I personally didn't stop to look in any of these shops. I got my most of mine from Bethlehem but I did pick up one little bracelet from the old city of Jerusalem which I will show you in my souvenirs haul. It's really really pretty, I really like it. So our first step was through the Christian quarter, of course. There are four quarters. There's the Christian quarter, the Armenian quarter, which is also Christian, and the Jewish quarter and the Muslim quarter. So we went straight to the Christian quarter because we wanted to see the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, of course, because this is the most important spiritual place for Christians on earth. And this is what the entrance looked like when I was there. There was some renovations and building work going on. So yeah, this is what authentically what it looks like. They're constantly doing renovations on the city. The first thing you see when you enter the church is the stone of anointing. And according to legend, this is the place where Jesus's body was laid before the burial right after he was crucified. And this place is usually really really busy. I didn't realize that at the time otherwise I would have rushed over there while we went in and there was no one there but I just did a quick glance over it <laughs> and because we were going to go to the next point but when we came back this place was so busy and people wouldn't move because people were praying understandably like you can really see the Holy Spirit working through people they were in deep deep prayer and obviously you don't want to disturb people and waiting <laughs> takes time especially if you see the big tour groups come in each person wants their own time and that's what takes so long so yeah had I known I would have had a little prayer at the stone but it's okay at least I got a picture of it 
while it was empty and I did manage to at least touch it for a second when it was busy. The priests anoint the uh, stone with oil so it's kept oily all the time and so what is customary for people to do is they bless any items with the oil that's on that stone and then the next part was of course the holy sepulchre itself which is the tomb of Jesus. Now sadly for me the tomb was under renovation for a couple of weeks when I was there so unfortunately couldn't go to see it on this occasion. Now what I think is really amazing about what they do is they don't care about tourism in the sense that if something needs renovating they're going to do it. They're not going to wait for an off-peak season or to suit tourists. If it needs to be done it's going to be done and that I greatly respect. So while I wasn't able to see that specific tomb, next to it there were two Jewish tombs and the tradition is that Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus were actually buried in these tombs. And above the tomb of course there is this dome and this beautiful hole for the light to shine through and it really is glorious like it feels holy just looking at it and depending on the time of day that you go of course it depends on the angle that the light is shining through the next part of the tour was up to calvary golgotha which is the point of jesus's crucifixion and by far it was the most spiritual place for me i did not expect i would react this way basically i was an absolute blubbering mess this is where he is crucified. I didn't expect to get as emotional as I did. And I was crying before I'd even got to the feet of the cross. I was looking at the stone on the right, as you can see, uh, there's stones on either side of the cross. And legend has it that Jesus was crucified right above the bones of where Adam was buried. When Jesus was crucified, there was an earthquake and the stones split and Jesus's blood trickled down and filled the skull of Adam, cleansing the first original sin. And yeah, it's just incredibly emotional story. Obviously that's not in the Bible, but that's legend continued. And that's what they say. And these are the stones and you can see they have split and they say the blood of Jesus is um, on them that had trickled down. So yeah, very emotional. And being at the place where it was finished, where our sins were paid for is, yeah, it's an extremely, emotional experience. So this is also a really special place. This is the chapel of Adam and this is the site where Adam, the very first man, is believed to be buried and it's one of the oldest chapels in the church of the sepulchre and it's directly underneath the Golgotha where Jesus was crucified which is why they say Jesus' blood trickled down into the bones of Adam. And behind this glass you can see a section of the cracked rock of Calvary the next part is on its way to the chapel of Saint Helena. So along the wall here you'll see lots of little crosses and these were actually sort of graffiti done by the crusaders. And Saint Helena was very important because she was the mother of the emperor of Constantine the Great and she is allegedly the one who discovered the true cross of Jesus Christ in the fourth century. So there is a whole beautiful chapel dedicated to her, which is also known as the chapel of the finding of the Holy Cross. And so that was pretty much the tour of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And it was an incredibly emotional and spiritual experience. It really was, especially having that time to be in the moment and really thinking, wow, Jesus was right here. Jesus was right here. And this was where the work was finished. And yeah, this is where he was buried. This is where he was resurrected as well. So that's pretty much all of just one church, let alone the rest of the experience. So I'll break this experience up into different videos. Please do let me know what you thought in the comments below, whether you've been before, what your experience was like, whether you still want to go. And I hope sharing my experience and seeing Jerusalem through my eyes is blessing you in some way too, bringing you a little bit of the Holy Land, even if you're not able to get there yourself or if you want to relive the experience. So thank you for spending time with me today. Remember Jesus loves you very much. God willing, I'll speak to you soon. And until then, have a blessed day. Bye.